Hey guys, what's up? So in the previous videos, we've learned the basics of Enscape, its interface and navigation controls, and we've also played around with the sunlight position so that we reach this interior simulation that we can see now in our Enscape window. So now we will try out the materials using Enscape. And first of all, you've probably noticed that Enscape already produced some very interesting materials, some of them even with reflections being simulated. For example, if you take a look at this object here, you can see that there are reflections going on, and that's happening because Enscape pre-configures some materials based on their name. So for example, if we would use here our paint bucket and with the Alt key click on this object, and we can now expand our default tray, I will actually pin our default tray back so it won't hide all the time. And if we check now the materials tab, we can see that the name of this material that's applied to this object is metal. So based on this name, Enscape is already simulating a metal material. For example, if I would change this name to any other name, I will basically change here to any other name, you will see that the metal material now is gone. So I will once again write here metal. And then we have again our metal material. So one simple way to create materials is basically to use specific names and then Enscape will do a great job in simulating based on this name. We can do the same process for example here in this water tap. I will press the Alt key and I'll click this object so we can see that the material is named tap. So I will basically write here metal. And now we can see that Enscape produced a really nice metal material for this water tap. I can do the same process, for example, to the fridge. So I'll choose here the fridge material with the Alt key again. And here we can check the name. And once again, I'll write metal here. And now we can see in our rendering window that we have a very interesting metal material. And of course, we could configure this metalness in a more sophisticated way. But for now, I'll basically accept these results. Okay, so we've noticed that Enscape does a very good job simulating some materials basically by tracking the name that was used. And this is happening with the metal material that we've just worked with. But this is also happening outside with our grass. So if we take a look outdoor, we will see that this object is already simulating a grass based on the name that was applied to its material. So I'll go back to my right view by double clicking here. And let's say that now we would like to work with materials in a more controlled way. So in this case, we have to use the material editor. So we can make a test by, for example, changing a little bit this wood that doesn't show now any kind of reflections. So I will once again with the Alt key click on this material and I can see that I've selected it already here. And now if I open the Enscape Material Editor by clicking this icon up here, we can now make changes in a more sophisticated way. So I will once again with the Alt key select this wood material here and now we can see that it's selected here in Enscape and also in SketchUp and as you can notice there are a lot of parameters that can be used to control the materials. You can see here that first of all we have a type of material, we have also this component named Albedo which is basically the main color of the materials and this is where we can put our main texture. We also have the hive map that controls the bump of the material and we have also a component called reflections where we can control all the reflections that are produced by some specific material in the scene. So I would like to make this wood a little bit more reflective. So in this case, one very simple step would be to decrease the value of roughness. So when we decrease this roughness value, the material becomes more reflective. So let's check if this is really happening. 
So I will set up a really low value for this component. And we can already notice in a very clear way that now this wood is very reflective and we can see how it reflects the other objects in the scene in a very interesting way, making a very interesting wood and a very nice result. We could even make this reflection stronger if we increase this metallic value. So just for testing out, I will drag this slider to the right and you can see that now the reflections are even stronger but now this wood starts to resemble some kind of metallic material, which is not my intention here. So I'll basically drag this to the left until I get back to the former result. Okay, so now I will repeat the same process to enhance these materials that supply to the kitchen's cabinet. So first of all, I will use the Alt key to click and select this material. And of course, if we are organized with our SketchUp file, it could be even easier to select the material directly from the list. And I will basically do the same thing we've just done. I will decrease this roughness value so that our reflections are now stronger and sharper. And we can already notice that now we have a little bit of reflections being simulated here. And it's important to understand that in real life, normally all the objects have a little bit of reflection. Sometimes they are more diffused and softer and sometimes they are sharper. So it obviously depends on the material, but it's always interesting to play around with this roughness value. And for sure, we will get more interesting results for our scenes. Okay, so we've configured already some really simple materials here in Enscape. And our final procedure here would be to try out the Enscape's material library. So for example, let's say we would like to change completely this material that's applied in the floor. So we can, in this case, open the Enscape material library by clicking this button up here. And now we can see a lot of materials that are provided by Enscape and they are very interesting materials that we can experiment in our scene. I will choose the wood filter here on the left. So I'll click here. And just for the sake of this exercise, I will choose this material called wood 02 chevron. So after we select the material, we can click here in import selection. Okay, now we can close this window since we have already downloaded this material to our scene. So I'll click close. And now we can see that the material we've just selected is here with that same name. And it also has this label. So I'll select it and I will basically apply with my paint bucket tool this material to the floor by clicking anywhere here and you can notice that the materials provided by Enscape are very realistic materials with a very good quality and they are already configured with albedo maps and normal maps and reflection maps so they are in fact very sophisticated materials so I'm really happy with the result of this material on the floor. And I will just make a very simple modification here since I find that these wood planks are very small. So in this case, we can, for example, click here the albedo texture, which is the image that was placed in this component. And it stands for the color of our material. I can click here and we can make changes in the size of this map. So for example, I will choose instead of one, two by two. And now I have a more interesting result here on the floor. And of course, we could also make this kind of modification here in the default tray. But many times it's easier to configure everything here using the Enscape Material Editor window. So now I can click in this arrow to go back to the main configurations of the material. I can also click here in my right view. So we'll once again shift our view to our scene that we've saved. And we can notice that our scene is getting much more interesting with more realistic materials and also with the light that we had already configured before. 